Want to speak real French from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at FrenchPod101.com. Hi everyone, I am Lindsay from FrenchPod101.com. In this video, we'll be talking about the top 10 most common tourist vocabulary. Let's begin. Ticket. 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 For example, you can hear Je vais vérifier votre ticket, monsieur. I am going to check your ticket, sir. So this happens a lot when you're in a train. Uh, somebody's going to come up to you and ask for your ticket. Tourist. 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 Les touristes français sont bruyants. <laughs> French tourists are noisy. Um, I don't know why you're saying that. Mm -mm, not true. Itinéraire. Itinerary. Itinéraire. Itinerary. Je dois planifier mon itinéraire. I need to plan my itinerary. Yeah, I love to do that myself. Like, I spend maybe two months before of my time to look for stuff. Guide touristique. Guidebook. Guide touristique. Guidebook. C'est recommandé dans le guide touristique. It is recommended in the guidebook. Bus touristique. Tour bus. Bus touristique. Tour bus. Ce bus touristique est plein à craquer. This tour bus is packed. When I visit new uh, cities, I usually use tour buses, like when I went to Chicago, for example. That's pretty cool. You can see, like, sightseeing and stuff like that. Temple. Temple. Temple, temple. Il y a de très beaux temples au Japon. There are beautiful temples in Japan. I have never been, so I cannot confirm about that, but yeah, maybe. Mosque, 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 mosque. Il y a une mosquée très célèbre à Istanbul. There is a very famous mosque in Istanbul. Église, church, église, church. Cette famille va à l'église tous les dimanches. This family goes to church every Sunday. Yes, that is really important, do it. Cascade, waterfall, cascade, waterfall. Il a pris une jolie cascade en photo. He took a picture of a beautiful waterfall. Yeah, we love to go to the, the Ni ah, Niagara Falls. <laughs> Niagara. Ni oh my gosh! Okay, so maybe <laughs> put it again. <laughs> Ni how do you say? Niagara. Niagara? Yeah. Niagara, but this, really? Visiter. To tour. Visiter. To tour. Ma famille va visiter Rome l'année prochaine. My family will visit Rome next year. I haven't been to Rome, but I have been to Milano and Venezia. Beautiful. Okay, so that's all for this lesson. Which phrase did you like the most? Leave us a comment letting us know. Hi everyone! I am Lindsay from FrenchPod101.com. In this video, we'll be talking about 10 ways to motivate yourself when learning French. Let's begin! Je m'imagine qu'un jour j'irai visiter ou habiter en France. I imagine that one day I will visit or live in France. France has many beautiful cities with nice things to see and good food. Whether it's just for sightseeing or living, it's really worth it. J'étudie également d'autres aspects de la langue, ce qui rend l'apprentissage du français plus enrichissant. I also study other aspects of the culture, which makes it more rewarding to study. French. It's always interesting to compare your own culture to others, to understand why things are the way they are. By doing research, you can avoid certain culture shocks while traveling. J'aime trouver des mots drôles en apprenant le français. I like to find funny words in French. It's easier to remember words when you associate them with something. Je deviens ami avec des personnes qui parlent le français. I make friends with people who speak French. 
It's really helpful to talk to native speakers, especially those who don't understand your mother tongue, as it forces you to speak. It's a very good way to improve your speaking skills. Je regarde les vidéos YouTube de personnes ayant appris le français avec succès. I watch YouTube videos from other people who have successfully learned French. It's always good to get some advice from other people who have been there. Since everybody is different, you might find some things easier and other things harder than they do. J'aime utiliser le français pour passer des commandes dans des restaurants français. I enjoy using French to order at French restaurants. If the waiters and waitresses are native speakers, they might be impressed and it's a good way to practice ordering food because you will need it if you go to France. Je regarde des films et séries françaises et suis content ou contente quand je peux apprendre un mot ou une phrase. I watch French movies and TV shows and enjoy the feeling I get when I can understand a word or a sentence. Watching movies and TV shows is good for hearing native French, things you don't learn at school and common expressions. If you enjoy watching French shows and movies, you won't feel like it's studying. It will just be fun. Being motivated is the best way to learn. J'ai changé la langue de mon téléphone portable, je l'utilise en français maintenant. I changed the language on my cell phone. I use it in French now. It helps you learn some useful vocabulary from everyday life. Je lis des livres pour enfants en français. I read books for children in French. Children's books have a lot of difficult French words, so it's a good way to learn many new words. J'écris ma liste de courses en français. I write my shopping list in French. This makes both studying French and shopping fun. Je suis des recettes françaises quand je cuisine. Okay, that's all about 10 ways to motivate yourself when learning French. Tu viens au centre Georges Pompidou Le centre Georges Pompidou Qu'est-ce que c'est C'est un musée d'art moderne. Et Georges Pompidou Qui c'est Oh là là, c'est un président français. Vous êtes étudiant Pardon Ah oui Vous êtes étudiant à l'université Oui Et vous, qu'est-ce que vous faites Je suis comédienne. Du cinéma Non, de théâtre. Je vous... Chut Regarde le film Moi, Jeanne. Toi, Tarzan. Hein Moi, Jeanne. Toi, Tarzan. Tu comprends le français euh, Pardon Je ne comprends pas. Tu comprends le français Lentement, s'il te plaît. Tu comprends le français Ah oui, un peu. Tu habites à Paris Oui, j'habite à Belleville. Et toi Non, je n'habite pas à Paris. Tu habites où à Toulouse. D'où tu es Moi, je suis de Klein Frankenheim. Klein Frankenstein Tu es allemand C'est Klein Frankenheim. Non, je suis français. Hi everybody, Candice here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher. Well, I answer your most common French questions. The question for this lesson is How do I express doubt or uncertainty in English, we usually use modal verbs to express doubt or uncertainty, like might or would. French, however, doesn't have modal verbs. You have to use completely different constructions. Let's start with might, as in I might go to the party. The easiest way to do this is to simply add the adverb peut-être, meaning maybe. So you would get, je vais peut-être à la fête. Another way to say might or may is to use il se peut que, plus the subjunctive. For example, il se peut que la voiture soit en panne, meaning it is possible that the car is broken down, or the car might be broken down. But be careful, if you want to say something might have happened in the past, you have to use past subjunctive. 
So, for example, il se peut que je l'ai lu. This means I might have read it. Or it's possible that I've read it. Let's move on to could and take the sentence I could eat a well. In this case, you're speaking about something you could do in the future. So you use the conditional of the verb can, which is pouvoir. And you get je pourrais manger une baleine. But let's say you want to talk about something you could have done in the past. In this case, you would use pouvoir in the past perfect. For example, j'aurais pu manger une baleine, meaning I could have eaten a whale. Now, let's look at would. You probably already know this form in the present tense. For example, je voudrais le croque-monsieur. I would like the croque-monsieur. This is the conditional present. You may also remember it from a previous lesson about if statements. For example, on partirait si vous étiez prêt, meaning we would leave if you were ready. This is case two, an unlikely situation that could come true if something else happened first. If you want to say that you would have in the past, then just conjugate the verb in the conditional perfect. For example, j'aurais voulu un croque-monsieur, meaning I would have liked a croque-monsieur. Finally, let's talk about should. Should is conjugated as the conditional of the verb devoir, meaning to have to or must. Then you add the infinitive of the verb that you should have done. For example, je devrais manger, meaning I should eat, or on devrait partir, meaning we should leave. This is a very helpful construction. So make sure to memorize the conditional present tense of devoir. If you want to talk about something you should have done, conjugate devoir in the conditional perfect. I should have eaten would be j'aurais dû manger. We should have left would be on aurait dû partir. You should have memorized it would be vous auriez dû le mémoriser. And that's it. I hope that helped. If you have any more questions, please leave them in the comments below and I try to answer them. A bientôt. See you soon. Welcome to Fun and Easy French by FrenchPod101.com. Do you know that there are gestures you probably do all of the time on every occasion but are considered rude and offensive in France? Salut! Je suis Laurine. Hi everyone, I'm Laurine. In this lesson, you learn all about French body gesture. Sometimes, gestures help us understand people and express ourselves better than the words we speak. If you want to meet new friends, be comfortable around French people and communicate without being offensive or rude, learning the specifics of French body language and gestures is definitely something that will benefit you. In this video, you'll learn 1. Greeting gestures 2. Positive gestures 3. Negative gestures 4. Neutral gestures 5. The reason why the French are so rude and 6. How French Pod 101 can help you Let's start with verbal greetings and their gestures. There are different body gestures when greeting someone in French. Let's start with Bonjour Hello Bonjour Bonjour You can say this while raising your hands and waving your hands from side to side with a swaying motion. It's used in informal situations to greet or say goodbye when you don't feel like doing handshakes or kisses or your art of arm reach of the people you know. It's a very common hand gesture used by the French. Another way to greet someone is by saying Bienvenue Welcome Bienvenue Bienvenue you can do this at a casual event by opening up your arms and spreading them with a smile. For formal occasions, open only one arm with a smile. 
This is how you greet your friends or peers in a warm and enthusiastic way. You can also greet your French friend through la bise, which means the kiss. La bise. La bise. Just lean forward and slightly brush cheeks with the other person while mimicking a kiss with the sound and lips gesture. Then switch cheeks and repeat. If you want se serrer la main, which means to shake hands, you can do so by reaching towards someone's hand and doing one or two up and down movements while looking at the person you're greeting straight in the eye. Se serrer la main. Se serrer la main. Shaking hands is common among friends, colleagues, or strangers in France. Next is positive gestures. Let's learn about French expressions and gestures that tend to have positive connotations. You'll surely find them useful next time you visit in France. First is oui. Yes, excellent. Oui, oui. You can add this by taking a fist and extending your thumbs upward. A thumbs up gesture in France is an old time classic. Although, if you're from the UK and US, be careful when using OK where you join your index and thumbs to make a circle. In several European countries, including France, it's a negative meaning, zero or worthless. Another positive gesture commonly used in France is related to the expression, ça va être génial. It's gonna be great. Ça va être génial. Ça va être génial. You just have to rub your palms together when doing this. But you're probably wondering what makes it a positive gesture when it can mean that you're cold. Depending on the context, rubbing your palms together usually convey that you're exciting or expecting something amazing. For example, you do this gesture when you're expecting to make good morning or before eating gorgeous looking meal. Delicieux. Is also a type of positive gesture in France. It means delicious. Delicieux. Delicieux. It can be done by kissing the joint tips of your finger when joyfully spreading them outward. This gesture is also known as the Italian chef kiss. You can use it when your French host is serving you a delicious, authentic French meal. Next is negative gestures. There are also negative gestures in French or action that are considered to be rude. Let's get into them right away. The first negative gesture is related to bof, which means something like, I don't care, I don't know, I'm not sure. Bof, bof. It's done by spreading your arms open with palms up then raising and lowering your shoulders. This infamous Gaelic shrug has many different meanings, so it's not the easiest one to pick up. You can use it when you're feeling indifferent, doubtful or indecisive, but it can express a wide range of messages. It's not my fault. There is nothing I can do. Don't ask me. And more. You can also use buff if you don't want to commit to a straight answer. For example, je t'offre un verre? Can I offer you a drink? Je t'offre un verre? Je t'offre un verre? You can answer with bof. C'est pas mon problème. Not my problem. Not my fault. C'est pas mon problème. C'est pas mon problème. This is another negative gesture that you might want to avoid doing. In this gesture, people raise their hands slightly over their shoulder, palms toward the other person, with their head and shoulder defensively held back. 
It's a bit similar to the buff shrug, but is perceived as a stronger version where instead of being indifferent or indecisive, you just don't want anything to do with whatever you're asked for. Quelle barbe! What a drag! Boring! Or literally, what a beard! Quelle barbe! Quelle barbe! This is also a negative gesture in France. It's done by stroking your cheek a few times with the back of your fingers like you're caressing your beard. This negative gesture comes from old Parisian slang and is only one of many beard-related French idioms. You use this when you feel bored or are annoyed with the people around you, but you're in a situation where you're not allowed to curse. For example, you are assigned to do a tedious task at work. You can turn to your co-workers and stroke your imaginary beard. Another example of a negative gesture is mon oeil, meaning I don't believe you, I highly doubt that. Mon oeil, mon oeil. It's done by using your index finger and pulling down the bottom lid of one eye. This is the French version of the American my foot to playfully express your disbelief or accuse someone of lying. This is a childish gesture though, so it's not really a good gesture for serious arguments or business negotiations. If you're feeling fed up or have had enough of something really terrible, you may use j'en ai ras -bol, which means I'm fed up, I've had enough. J'en ai ras le bol, j'en ai ras le bol. When translated literally, it just means my bowl is full. But in a French language, it has a unique meaning. When doing it, you can just swipe your end up horizontally over your head. Combined with an eloquent frown, you can use it to express your annoyance when trouble is spinning way up over your head. Next is neutral gestures. Now, it's time to learn some neutral gestures commonly used in France. They will help you respond appropriately or express yourself without getting misinterpreted. First on the list is Shh, shh, keep quiet. Shh, shh. This is done by simply extending your index finger and placing it vertically across your mouse. You probably already know what this gesture means, but since it can take different forms in some countries, it's worth mentioning. Viens, come here. Viens, viens is a neutral expression done by extending up your index finger, palm up, and folding it inward. It can also be done with all finger at once. Because this isn't as obvious as it may seem, it should be performed properly. For example, if you use the Japanese palm down version in France, it can be interpreted as rude and disrespectful. Another neutral gesture you may want to practice is comme si comme ça, so so, more or less. Comme si comme ça, comme si comme ça. Just place your hand in front of you palm down and tip it from left to right several times. This convenient gesture can be used in a formal or casual situation. For example, if you're having a bad day and someone asks how you're going, you can use this gesture to respond. Another friend gesture that can express a wide variety of emotion ranging from surprise to annoyance, distress or disappointment is Oh la la, meaning, oh no, wow, oh la la, oh la la. You can do it by raising your hand in front of your chest and shaking it loosely as if trying to revive your numb fingers. You can also use it when you're impressed or if someone is in trouble. One funny gesture used to let people know that you're drunk 
or to raise their awareness of the intoxication of third party is avoir un coup dans le nez, to be drunk, avoir un coup dans le nez, avoir un coup dans le nez. Literally, it means to have a drink in the nose. It's done by placing a loose fist around the tip of your nose and rotate it as if trying to unscrew it. Another example of a neutral gesture is C'est pas donné. It's expensive. C'est pas donné. C'est pas donné. Literally, it means it's not given. But this informal gesture works in many situations where lots of money is involved. It's most commonly used for something expensive, but can also mean that something is lucrative. For example, when reading the menu of a pricey restaurant, you could use this gesture toward your friends to tell them you can't afford it and if you all could find a cheaper restaurant. Just rub your thumbs against the tips of your index and middle finger when doing this gesture. The last example of a neutral gesture is Il est fou, elle est sanglée. He's crazy, she's nuts. Il est fou, elle est sanglée. Il est fou, elle est sanglée. It's done by tapping the side of your head with the tip of your index finger. It's a bit similar to the American crazy gesture that will also be understood in France. Obviously, this is a very informal gesture and could be offensive to strangers, so only use it around your friends for humor. Next is why the French are so rude. Don't believe the rumor. French people aren't rude, but still we can't help but wonder why do some people assume this? France remains one of the top tourism destinations in the world, so where did the rude assumption come from? Allow us to share two different explanations for this. The first reason is body language and perception. Body language is a big deal, more than you can imagine, both around the world and in French culture. Your posture and attitude speak volumes and people form an opinion right away based on your gestures. For example, French people are more controlled than Americans in terms of body language. Their shoulder and arms stay close to the body, their chest straight in overall rigidity. The French look at it as an expression of restraint, but some call it being tense or stiff, which contributes to this impression of the French being cold and unwelcoming. Another reason is the intonation and gestures. Whatever space French people are taking when they move, they compensate for it when they talk. They use physical gestures to express a wide range of emotions without words, mostly using their face and hands, and it's easy to get the wrong impression if you don't know the language nor the gestures. Since the natural French intonation is also widely guilty of this impression, it makes the French sound angry using sharp or abusive sounding tones even though they were only having a friendly debate over lunch. Now on to part 5. How can French Pod 101 help you? By teaching you French and getting you to speak from your very first lesson. French Pod 101 lesson build you up from your first words to mastering entire conversations. And you get lessons for all levels from absolute beginner to advanced. Enough to take you from knowing zero to speaking fluently. You can also learn with your own teacher with the Premium Plus plan. They'll correct your French, tell you how to improve your speaking, writing and grammar, and even help you practice for job interviews in French. In this lesson, you learned different types of positive, negative and neutral gestures, as well as how French people differ from other cultures or countries in terms of body language and intonations. 
So, if you want to speak French and learn in the fastest, easiest, and most fun way, go to frenchbod101.com and sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Get our complete learning program with real lessons by real teachers. That's it for today. À la prochaine. See you next time. Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description. Want to speak real French from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at frenchpod101.com. Hi everyone, I am Lindsay from frenchpod101.com. In this video, we'll be talking about the five most popular French bands. A really great way to learn any language is through its music. Here are a few famous French bands to check out. Let's begin. The first band is Louise Attack. Louise Attack. It really means Louise Attacks and refers to the French anarchist woman Louise Michel, who was active in the 19th century. Louise Attack est un groupe de pop rock français formé en 1994. Louise Attack is a pop rock band founded in 1994. Yeah, I remember my sister listening to them. I don't think I really like them actually. Noir Désir. Noir Désir. One of their best sellers is Le Vent Nous Portera. You should definitely check it out if you haven't yet. Don't remember. Noir Désir est un groupe de rock de Bordeaux. Noir Désir is a rock band from Bordeaux. Daft Punk. Daft Punk. This group has played an important role in the electronic music history and is known all around the world. Daft Punk est un groupe de musique électronique. Daft Punk is an electronic music band. Yeah, I love Daft Punk. Another great band is Gojira. Gojira. When they formed their band in 1996, their name was Godzilla. They changed it to Gojira in 2001. Gojira is a group of metal extreme. Gojira is a heavy metal band. And if you like beats, you love I Am. Oh my gosh, I Am. I Am. I Am is a very famous French hip hop band from Marseille, formed in 1989. One of their best sellers is Petit Frère. I Am est un groupe de rap. I Am is a rap band. I love I Am. Petit Frère, ad... I don't remember the song, sorry. But you should listen to it. Okay, so that's all for this lesson. Did you already know these bands? Do you know any other French bands? Let me know in the comments. And I will see you next time. A bientôt. Uh, M. Pokora. Oh my gosh, this guy is so handsome and I love his music. I went to his concert a long time ago. <sighs> you gotta check him out. He's so handsome, especially if you're a girl. Mm -mm. Hi everyone, I am Lindsay from FrenchPod101.com. In this video, we'll be talking about the five most popular sports in France. Let's begin. The first sport is tennis. 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 In France, tennis used to be a high class sport, but is now becoming more and more popular among everyone. Mon colocataire est professeur de tennis. My roommate is a tennis instructor. Yeah, remember watching Juan Carlos Ferrero? Oh my gosh. Handsome man. The next is natation. Swimming. Natation. Swimming. Swimming is very popular in France. Nowadays, one of the most famous French swimmers is Jérémy Stravius. Ma sœur fait de la natation deux fois par semaine. My sister goes to swimming twice a week. Yeah, that's really good if you want to lose weight. 
and tone at the same time. Rugby, 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 rugby. Rugby is especially popular among men in the southwestern part of France, in cities such as Toulouse or Biarritz. Vous savez jouer au rugby? Do you know how to play rugby? I don't. But it seems like this is kind of the same as you guys. You have, uh, how you call that? This, the thing? American football? American football, exactly. They're, they're pretty different. Mm, really? I mean, this is the same ball, but you guys don't have that in America. You do have it in America. Oh, you have that as well. Oh, okay. Next up is football. Soccer. Football, soccer. Soccer is definitely the most popular sport in France. Je n'aime pas le football. I don't like soccer. Yeah, France were um, the world champion in 1998, from what I recall. And I cried, I remember. Yeah, stupid. And then there is cyclism, cycling. Cyclism, cycling. This is very famous also because of the Tour de France, which takes place once a year and is one of the most followed cycling races in the world. I've never watched it, this is so boring. Okay, so that's all for this lesson. Which sports do you like the most? Let us know by leaving a comment below. And we'll see you next time. A bientôt! Uh, I had to play the handball and I had to play the volleyball and I had to, to run and all that stuff and oh my gosh I was so bad. Sorry I'm not a sport person. Even though I look um, pretty fit but uh, no that's not for me. You are at a train station where you're attempting to buy an express ticket from a ticket machine. Which option should you choose to buy an express ticket? Which option should you choose to buy an express ticket? The option on the bottom left is for an express ticket. Billet pour train express. You are at a train station where you've just bought an express ticket. Which train car row and seat number are you in? Which train car row and seat number are you in? The ticket says that you're in train car number one in the eighth row in seat C. Voiture une, rangée huit, place C. You are at a train station where you're reading the train schedule for an express ticket that you've just bought. On which days are there no express trains running? On which days are there no express trains running?
There are no express trains running on public holidays and the third Sunday of every month. Jour férié, troisième dimanche du mois. Want to speak real French from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at frenchpod101.com. You are on a platform at a train station where you're waiting for your train. Suddenly, a message appears on the display. What does the message on the display mean? What does the message on the display mean? The display reads, the next train will not stop. Le prochain train ne s'arrêtera pas. You are at a train station where you're looking for the best exit to catch a taxi. Which exit should you take to get to the taxi rank? Which exit should you take to get to the taxi rank? You should take the east exit in order to get to the taxi rank. Sortie Est. Hi everybody, Candice here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I answer your most common French questions. The question for this lesson is, how do I form the future tenses and when should I use them? There are two future tenses in French, the futur proche and futur simple. Proche means near. When we use futur proche, we're talking about the near future, things that will happen soon. Conjugation is easy. We use the present tense of aller, to go, and then add the infinitive. So the verb nager, to swim, becomes je vais nager, meaning I'm going to swim. Tu vas nager, meaning you're going to swim. Il va nager, meaning he's going to swim, and so on. To make the future simple, we add the stem plus the ending. The verb stem for e and ir verbs is just the infinitive. So, the verb stem for nager is nager. The verb stem for finir, to finish, is finir. For re verbs, we drop the e. So, vendre becomes vendre. The endings are very similar to the present conjugation of avoir. They're always the same e, a, a, on, e, However, there are irregular stems which you will have to memorize. We go for all the most important ones now, saying the verb, its stem, a simple conjugation, and its translation. Aller, ir, j'irai, I will go. Être, ser, tu seras, you will be. Avoir, or, il aura, we will have. Pouvoir, pour, nous pourrons. We will be able to. Vouloir, voudre, vous voudrez. You will want to. Venir, viendre, elles viendront. They will come. Savoir, sort, je saurai. I will know. Faire, faire, tu feras. You will do or make. Envoyer. Envers, elle enverra. She will send. 
OK, so which one should you use? You'll use the future proche for the near future and future simple for things that are further in the future. If you are going to go swimming right after this lesson, use future proche. Je vais nager. If you will swim in the ocean on your vacation in Barcelona, use future simple. Je nagerai dans la mer. Future simple is also used in some forms, like if statements. But we will cover those in later lessons, so don't worry about it now. If you use mostly future proche when speaking, you'll be just fine. Do you have any more questions? Please leave them in the comments below, and I try to answer them. À bientôt. See you soon. Welcome to Fun and Easy French by FrenchPod101.com. Do you know that there are different forms of greeting someone that you just met in French? Salut, je suis Laurine. Hi everyone, I'm Laurine. In this lesson, you'll learn all about how to introduce yourself in French. Learning how to introduce yourself in French is very important when making new French friends, especially if you're looking into leaving a great first impression with them. It's also not necessary for you to be fluent in French when introducing yourself in any situation. You only need to learn the right tips and tricks to make sure people don't forget about you once they get to know you. In this video, you'll learn first, how to get started when introducing yourself, second, how to learn about each other, then some specific introduction lines, and finally, how to leave an impression and how FrenchPod 101 can help you. Let's start with how to get started. Do you want to make friends with the people in France and create a long-lasting first impression? Then, you need to know what formal greetings in French are. There is a French etiquette that you need to follow when greeting someone in French. Here's the first useful word. Bonjour, hello or good day. Bonjour. Bonjour is used from morning to sundown. It's not too formal, nor too relaxed. Another way to start a conversation is by greeting someone with Bonsoir, good evening. Bonsoir. Bonsoir, it's the nighttime version of bonjour and can be used professionally and with your friends. You may also greet by saying Salut, hi, salut, salut. It's the casual version of bonjour that you can use at any time of the day. There are two forms of you in French. Vous, vous, vous for formal encounters or when meeting someone for the first time. And tu, tu, tu for more casual interaction or when meeting friends and acquaintance. Another formal greeting in French is shaking someone's hand or using la bise, the kiss. La bise. What are the differences? Let me explain. La bise, or the typical French custom of kissing on the cheeks, can be used when greeting someone of the opposite sex in a casual way, for example, after using salut and tu. But if you're not sure what to do, go for a handshake instead. Next is useful expressions to learn about each other. Now, let's learn about the classic questions and answers that usually come up when you meet someone. Others will not only get to know you, but you'll be able to get to know them as well. But before we begin, you first need to remember that questions have two forms. Formal and casual. Answers, on the other hand, mostly have one form only. Let's start with the question, what's your name? Giving your name or asking someone's name in French uses the verb s'appeler. 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 The casual form of what's your name is Comment tu t'appelles? Comment tu t'appelles? Comment tu t'appelles? Or, 
Tu t'appelles comment Tu t'appelles comment Tu t'appelles comment The formal form, on the other hand, is Comment vous appelez-vous Comment vous appelez-vous Comment vous appelez-vous Here's an example of an answer. Je m'appelle Bob. My name is Bob. Je m'appelle Bob. Je m'appelle Bob. It literally means I call myself Bob. This is the most common way to state your name and it works in both formal and casual situations. Now, it's your turn to ask the same question. You can casually say Et toi? And you? Et toi? Et toi? Or formally say Et vous? And you? Et vous? Et vous? When you're being asked back in a casual situation, you can answer Moi, c'est Bob. I'm Bob. Moi, c'est Bob. Moi, c'est Bob. Next, I'm going to teach you how to ask and answer back in French with the question Where are you from? The casual form of this question is like this. D'où tu viens? Where are you from? D'où tu viens? Other forms are Tu viens d'où? Tu viens d'où? Or Tu es d'où? Tu es d'où? Another example is De quel pays tu viens? From what country are you from? De quel pays tu viens? De quel pays tu viens? Or, tu es de quelle nationalité? What is your nationality? Tu es de quelle nationalité? Tu es de quelle nationalité? The formal way on the other end is like this. D'où venez-vous? Where are you from? D'où venez-vous? D'où venez-vous? Or, de quel pays venez-vous? From what country are you from? De quel pays venez-vous? De quel pays venez-vous? Another example is Quelle est votre nationalité? What is your nationality? Quelle est votre nationalité? Quelle est votre nationalité? If you're from another country, like China, you can answer with the Je viens de Chine. I'm coming from China. Je viens de Chine. Je viens de Chine. Or, je suis chinois. If you're male, je suis chinoise. If you're female, it means I am Chinese. Je suis chinois. Or, je suis chinoise. If you feel like giving the city where you're currently living, you can say Je viens de Paris. I'm from Paris. Je viens de Paris. Je viens de Paris. Or J'habite à Paris. I'm living in Paris. J'habite à Paris. J'habite à Paris. Next up, We're going to learn the casual and formal way of asking the question What's your profession? and how to answer it in French. Don't worry, in French it's very common to ask about other people's job in the early conversation. So feel free to ask this question or answer back if you're being asked. The casual way of asking about someone's profession is like this. Tu fais quoi dans la vie? What are you doing in life? Tu fais quoi dans la vie? Tu fais quoi dans la vie? Or Tu fais quel métier? What is your job? Tu fais quel métier? Tu fais quel métier? In a formal setting, you can ask it like this. Quel travail faites-vous? What is your occupation? Quel travail faites-vous? Quel travail faites-vous? 
If you're being asked about your profession, you can answer in any of these ways. Je suis étudiante. I'm a student. Je suis étudiante. Je suis étudiante. Or, j'étudie la biologie. I'm studying biology. J'étudie la biologie. J'étudie la biologie. Another one is, je travaille dans l'informatique. I'm working in IT. Je travaille dans l'informatique. Je travaille dans l'informatique. You can also answer with, je suis dans la finance. I'm working in finance. Je suis dans la finance. Je suis dans la finance. Or, if you're a carpenter, you can say, je suis charpentier. I'm a carpenter. Je suis charpentier. Je suis charpentier. By the way, the keywords here are travail or métier, which means occupation or profession. Travail or métier. During casual conversations, you can replace them with some slang expressions. For example, boulot, 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 or taf, 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 or job, job, job. When meeting someone for the first time, asking about their family isn't really too common. But just in case someone asks you, you might as well learn how to ask or answer it in French. Here are some examples in casual French. Tu es marié? Are you married? Tu es marié? Tu es marié? Tu as des enfants? Do you have kids? Tu as des enfants? Tu as des enfants? Tu as des frères et sœurs? Do you have brothers and sisters? Tu as des frères et sœurs? Tu as des frères et sœurs? In a formal setting, you can ask it this way. Vous êtes marié? Are you married? Vous êtes marié? Vous êtes marié? Vous avez des enfants? Do you have kids? Vous avez des enfants? Vous avez des enfants? Vous avez des frères et sœurs? Do you have brothers and sisters? Vous avez des frères et sœurs? Vous avez des frères et sœurs? Then, you may find yourself answering in any of these ways. Oui, je suis marié. Yes, I'm married. Oui, je suis marié. Oui. Je suis marié. Non, je suis célibataire. No, I'm single. Non, je suis célibataire. Non, je suis célibataire. Non, je suis divorcé. No, I'm divorced. Non, je suis divorcé. Non, je suis divorcé. J'ai deux enfants. I have two kids. J'ai deux enfants. J'ai deux enfants. J'ai un petit frère et une grande sœur. I have a little brother and a big sister. J'ai un petit frère et une grande sœur. J'ai un petit frère et une grande sœur. French people are a bit more sensitive about asking someone else's age, especially for women. But if you meet a young girl or a woman who's comfortable about answering just about any questions, then you may ask about her age. The casual way of asking someone's age is Tu as quel âge? How old are you? Tu as quel âge? Tu as quel âge? Asking in a formal manner is Quel âge avez-vous? Quel âge avez-vous? Quel âge avez-vous? Then, you can answer it with J'ai 30 ans. I'm 30 years old. J'ai 30 ans. 
j'ai 30 ans. Next question you may ask or might be asked of you is a question about your hobbies. The casual way of asking is C'est quoi tes hobbies? Or passe-temps? What are your hobbies? C'est quoi tes hobbies? Passe-temps? C'est quoi tes hobbies? Passe-temps? Or you can also ask Tu fais quoi de ton temps libre? What do you do with your free time? Tu fais quoi de ton temps libre? Tu fais quoi de ton temps libre? The formal way, on the other hand, is Quels sont vos hobbies? What are your hobbies? Quels sont vos hobbies? Quels sont vos hobbies? Or Que faites-vous de votre temps libre? What do you do with your free time? Que faites-vous de votre temps libre? The formal way, on the other end, is Quels sont vos hobbies? What are your hobbies? Quels sont vos hobbies? Quels sont vos hobbies? Or Que faites-vous de votre temps libre? What do you do with your free time? Que faites-vous de votre temps libre? Que faites-vous de votre temps libre? Here are some examples of answering this question in French. Je joue au tennis. I'm playing tennis. Je joue au tennis. Je joue au tennis. Je joue du piano. I'm playing piano. Je joue du piano. Je joue du piano. Je passe mes nuits sur HBO. I spend my nights on HBO. Je passe mes nuits sur HBO. Je passe mes nuits sur HBO. J'écris un journal de voyage. I'm writing a travel diary. J'écris un journal de voyage. J'écris un journal de voyage. Next, let's see some specific introduction lines. Now that you know the most common questions and answers in French, let's now start learning how to introduce yourself with useful French phrases in certain situations. When traveling, you may find yourself conversing with friendly locals. The conversation could go this way. Tu voyages depuis longtemps? You're being asked. Have you been traveling for a long time? Tu voyages depuis longtemps? Tu voyages depuis longtemps? Then, you can answer with Je voyage depuis deux mois. I have been traveling for two months. Je voyage depuis deux mois. Je voyage depuis deux mois. If you are asked, tu as visité quel autre pays? What other countries did you visit? Tu as visité quel autre pays? Tu as visité quel autre pays? You can answer with, je suis allé en Espagne et en Italie. I have been to Spain and Italy. Je suis allé en Espagne et en Italie. Je suis allé en Espagne et en Italie. But what about when you're meeting with your coworkers? You may be asked, tu travailles dans quel service? Which means, in which division are you working? Tu travailles dans quel service? Tu travailles dans quel service? Then, you can answer with Je travaille aux ressources humaines. I'm working with HR. Je travaille aux ressources humaines. Je travaille aux ressources humaines. Another question could be Tu bosses sur quoi en ce moment? What are you working on right now? Tu bosses sur quoi en ce moment? Tu bosses sur quoi en ce moment? You may answer it with Je viens de commencer un nouveau projet. I have just started working on a new project. Je viens de commencer un nouveau projet. 
je viens de commencer un nouveau projet. When you're in a casual social event, someone might ask you, tu fais quoi demain soir? What are you doing tomorrow night? Tu fais quoi demain soir? Tu fais quoi demain soir? You may answer with Je vais au cinéma avec un pote. I'm going to a movie with a pal. Je vais au cinéma avec un pote. Je vais au cinéma avec un pote. Another question you may come across is Tu as un copain? Or Tu as une copine? Do you have a boyfriend, girlfriend? Tu as un copain? Tu as une copine? Tu as un copain? Or Tu as une copine? You may answer with Non, on a rompu il y a deux semaines. No, we broke up two weeks ago. Non, on a rompu il y a deux semaines. Non, on a rompu il y a deux semaines. Another situation you might get into while in France is participating in a family meeting. So, if a family member asks you, Vous vous êtes rencontrés comment? Meaning, How did you meet? Vous vous êtes rencontrés comment? Vous vous êtes rencontrés comment? You can answer it with J'ai rencontré Julie à l'université. I met Julie at the university. J'ai rencontré Julie à l'université. J'ai rencontré Julie à l'université. Another question that you might be asked of you is Comment tu connais Bastien? How do you know Bastien? Comment tu connais Bastien? Comment tu connais Bastien? You may answer it with on travaille ensemble. We work together. On travaille ensemble. On travaille ensemble. Next is how to leave an impression. We would like to share with you a couple of tips that you can use if you want to leave a great impression when making new friends. The first tip is to never make it all about yourself. When someone asks something about you, there is really no need to tell that person everything about you. It will make you more interesting and appealing if you let that person find out what else he can offer or can do. Talk less about yourself. Ask them questions instead. Learn more about their culture or find what they like to do. Focus on getting to know them more. It will make them feel you are interested in them and they will soon feel comfortable to be around you. Another thing you may want to do if you want to leave a great impression is showing your interest by dropping a word of appreciation once you hear that person's name. This can take different forms. Here are some examples. Enchanté, which means delighted. Enchanté, enchanté. Ravi de vous rencontrer, or heureux, or Heureuse de vous rencontrer. Happy to meet you. Ravi de vous rencontrer. Or heureux or heureuse de vous rencontrer. Ravi de vous rencontrer. Or heureux or heureuse de vous rencontrer. C'est un plaisir de vous rencontrer. It's a pleasure to meet you. C'est un plaisir de vous rencontrer. C'est un plaisir de vous rencontrer. You can cut it down to Un plaisir de vous rencontrer. Please to meet you. Un plaisir de vous rencontrer. Un plaisir de vous rencontrer. Or even Un plaisir. A pleasure. Un plaisir. Un plaisir. Other forms to show your interests when you're greeting in French are Je m'appelle Julie. My name is Julie. Je m'appelle Julie. Je m'appelle Julie. You can then say C'est un très joli prénom. It's a really pretty name. 
C'est un très joli prénom. C'est un très joli prénom. Another example is Je suis photographe. I'm a photographer. Je suis photographe. Je suis photographe. You can respond with Génial! Quel genre de photo? Great! What kind of photos? Génial! Quel genre de photo? Génial! Quel genre de photo? And J'ai 40 ans. I'm 40 years old. J'ai 40 ans. J'ai 40 ans. You may then say Vraiment? Tu fais beaucoup plus jeune. Really? You look so much younger. Vraiment? Tu fais beaucoup plus jeune. Vraiment? Tu fais beaucoup plus jeune. The last tip we want to share with you is for you to start a conversation in French. You're likely to make a good first impression if you at least try to converse in French. It doesn't matter if your French is unpolished. They will appreciate you for trying. Saying bonjour, hello, bonjour, bonjour. Or, je ne parle pas français. I don't speak French. Je ne parle pas français. Je ne parle pas français. It's better than not being able to speak any French words at all. Now on to part 5. How can FrenchPod 101 help you? By teaching you French and getting you to speak from your very first lesson. FrenchPod 101's lessons build you up from your first words to mastering entire conversations. And you get lessons from for all levels, from absolute beginner to advanced. Enough to take you from knowing zero to speak fluently. You can also learn with your own teacher with the Premium Plus plan. They'll correct your French, tell you how to improve your speaking, writing and grammar, and even help you practice for job interviews in French. In this lesson, you learned how to greet in French in casual and formal manner. The most common types of question and answers example of introduction lines, and how to leave a good first impression when meeting a French person for the first time. Top 10 must-know phrases for the restaurant. Let's begin. Oh my gosh, again food, I'm so hungry. Une table pour trois, s'il vous plaît. Une table pour trois, s'il vous plaît. A table for three, please. Actually, I used that a lot when I was in Italy. Uh, But it was a table for three, per favore. A table for three, per favore. Anyways, you can use this phrase when making a reservation. You can change the number depending on how many people are with you. For example, to reserve a table for two, you can say une table pour deux, s'il vous plaît. Une table pour deux, s'il vous plaît. Pour une table pour un, for a table just for one, you will say une table pour un. Le menu, s'il vous plaît. Le menu, s'il vous plaît. The menu, please. Use this when you can see the menu on the table or the waiter forgot to bring one. This happens a lot. J'aimerais ceci, s'il vous plaît. J'aimerais ceci, s'il vous plaît. I like this dish, please. You can say this while indicating on the menu. It may come in handy if you are not sure how to pronounce a dish name. Yeah, I use that a lot myself, especially for Japanese food. Sans oignon, s'il vous plaît. Sans oignon, s'il vous plaît. Without onions, please. If you don't like something, you should memorize this. You can refer to anything else by substituting oignon with a different noun. For example, if you want to order a beverage without ice, you can say sans glaçon, s'il vous plaît. Sans glaçon, s'il vous plaît. Sans tomate, without tomatoes. Sans tomate. Pourriez-vous m'apporter du sel? Pourriez-vous m'apporter du sel? Can you please bring me the salt? Yeah, American people love salt. I don't know why, because I don't. You can use this phrase to ask for seasonings such as salt or pepper or a missing tableware. Excusez-moi. 
Excusez-moi. Excuse me. Use this to call the waiter's attention. Excusez-moi. While trying to make eye contact. Sometimes they might ignore you, unfortunately. Où sont les toilettes? Où sont les toilettes? Where is the bathroom? This may turn useful in any situation, not only when you are at a restaurant. For example, if you are in the street and ask, uh, où puis-je utiliser les toilettes? Where can I use restrooms or bathroom? Qu'est-ce que ce plat contient? Qu'est-ce que ce plat contient? What does this dish have in it? If you have allergies, you have to learn this question to make sure you can fully enjoy your meal. Yes, sometimes at restaurants they ask you if you have any allergies, but sometimes they don't, so please make sure to ask. Est-ce que c'est possible de payer séparément? Est-ce que c'est possible de payer séparément? Is it possible to pay separately? You can ask this question when paying the bill and if you want to split the amount. For example, when you go out with your friends, you can ask for a separate bill, right? Donc, uh, l'addition séparée? L'addition, s'il vous plaît. L'addition, s'il vous plaît. The bill, please. When you are ready to leave the restaurant, use this phrase to ask for the bill. It's common to pay at the table, and though you are not expected to give it a tip, it is always a kind gesture to leave some loose change. Yeah, in America, you are expected to do so. In France, not really. But you can give like one or two euros, you know? 10 phrases to survive at the station. Because it's pretty hard in there. It's the jungle. J'aimerais aller à... I'd like to go to... J'aimerais aller à... I would like to go to... Then put the name of the place. Whether it's a city, if you're taking the train, or if it's a metro, you might want to know more precise location. So, if you can find someone at the ticket counter, just ask. J'aimerais aller à... And then they will give you the directions. Est-ce la bonne plateforme pour... Is it the right platform for... Est-ce la bonne plateforme pour... Is it the right platform for... Place. So if the station is really big, you will have a lot of platforms. And sometimes it might get confusing, so you might want to ask if you're on the right place. And if it's a metro, for example, or, or a tramway, uh, they go both directions, so you want to sh be sure you are on the right side of the platform to get the right direction, or else you would go the other way, and it can get tricky. À quelle heure est le dernier train? What time is the last train? À quelle heure est le dernier train? What time is the last train? This question sounds so Japanese. <laughs> if it's a big normal train, mm. they may have trains all day and sometimes even night trains. And if you are talking about a metro or tramway train, then depending on the cities, sometimes they finish later. But around midnight is a good safe spot for the last train. So try to get them before midnight. Sometimes they have some after, but that's mostly in bigger cities. So you don't want to take that risk. Où puis-je changer pour... Where do I change for? Où puis-je changer pour... Where can I change for? Place. I didn't change at the proper spot and ended up 250 kilometers away from where I was supposed to be. <laughs> ah, whoopsie. Be sure to check that. And be sure also to have enough time before trains to change. If you are going from a big train to a big train and going through a big train station, or even through a big city, sometimes they have many train stations, so you need enough time to go from one station to another. So be careful with that. Où est la gare? Where is the train station? Où est la gare? Where is the train station? Where is the train station? This is not a sentence to survive at the station. <laughs> because you're not in the station, you're looking for it. Ask your local policeman. Train station are usually indicated, so they should be easy to find. But if you don't know, ju just ask anyone, really. Où est-ce que je peux acheter un billet? Where can I buy a ticket? Où est-ce que je peux acheter un billet? Where can I buy a ticket? If you are going abroad from France, mm, sometimes you will have to queue at the ticket counter to get your ticket. Usually people speak English. Où sont les distributeurs automatiques de billets? Where are the ticket machines? Où sont les distributeurs automatiques de billets? 
Where are the ticket machines? In the station, duh. They are a bit everywhere. Est-ce que ce bus va à? Does this bus go to? Est-ce que ce bus va à? Does this bus go to? Place? You can ask this to the driver of the bus. Because sometimes, again, the, the map for all the bus routes can be pretty tricky to understand and you cannot really be sure if you are on the right side of the road to take the right bus in the right direction. So you should ask your bus driver if you're not sure. Où est l'arrêt de bus? Where is the bus stop? Où est l'arrêt de bus? Where is the bus stop? Depending on the city, you will have many bus lines. So you want to find the right bus stop for the right bus line. So if you find a bus stop, it may not be your right line. So be sure to check that too. Le train a du retard. The train is running late. Le train a du retard. The train is running late. It is indeed. Mostly buses are late in France. Trains are okay-ish. They can depart on time. Don't expect them to be really precise. But still be on time just in case it leaves on time this one time. That was a lot of time. Timey time. In this video, you learn 20 of the most common words and phrases in French. Hi everybody, my name is Leah. Welcome to the 800 core French words and phrases video series. This series will teach you the 800 most common words and phrases in French. But there is a twist. With each new lesson in this series, we'll include the previous lessons at the end. So after you've learned the new words and phrases, stick around and review what you've learned in previous lessons. Reviewing is one of the most important parts of learning a language. You can also get the full list right now at frenchpod101.com. Click the link in the description to access more example sentences, create your own flashcard deck, and finally master French. Okay, let's get started. First is... Bonjour. Hello. Bonjour. Bonjour. Hello. Quand je rencontre une personne, je dis bonjour. When I meet someone, I say hello. Quand je rencontre une personne, je dis bonjour. Bon après-midi. Have a nice afternoon. Bon après-midi. Bon après-midi. Have a nice afternoon. Bon après-midi, mademoiselle. Have a nice afternoon, miss. Bon après-midi, mademoiselle. Bonsoir. Good evening. Bonsoir. Bonsoir. Good evening. Bonsoir, bienvenue. Good evening, welcome. Bonsoir. Bienvenue. Bonne nuit. Good night. Bonne nuit. Bonne nuit. Good night. Bonne nuit, mon ami. Good night, my friend. Bonne nuit, mon ami. Enchanté de vous rencontrer. Nice to meet you. Enchanté de vous rencontrer. Enchanté de vous rencontrer. Nice to meet you. Enchanté de vous rencontrer, monsieur. Nice to meet you, sir. Enchanté de vous rencontrer, monsieur. Comment vas-tu? How are you? Comment vas-tu? Comment vas-tu? How are you? Ça fait longtemps. Comment vas-tu? It's been a long time. How are you? Ça fait longtemps. Comment vas-tu? Oui. Yes. Oui. Oui. Yes. 
Oui, s'il vous plaît. Yes, please. Oui, s'il vous plaît. Non. No. Non. Non. No. No merci. No thanks. No merci. Merci. Thank you. Merci. Merci. Thank you. Merci beaucoup pour l'invitation. Thank you very much for the invitation. Merci beaucoup pour l'invitation. Je m'appelle. I'm. Je m'appelle. Je m'appelle. I'm. Je m'appelle John. I'm John. Je m'appelle John. Au revoir. Goodbye. Au revoir. Au revoir. Goodbye. Au revoir, à bientôt. Goodbye, see you soon. Au revoir, à bientôt. Mauvais. Bad. Mauvais. Mauvais. Bad. C'est un mauvais garçon. He is a bad boy. C'est un mauvais garçon. Bon. Good. Bon. Bon. Good. Les légumes sont bons pour vous. Vegetables are good for you. Les légumes sont bons pour vous. Belle. Beautiful. Belle. Belle. Beautiful. Très beau. Very beautiful. Très beau. Les. Ugly. Les. Les. Ugly. Visage les. Ugly face. Visage les. Facile. Easy. Facile. Facile. Easy. Ce problème est facile. This problem is easy. Ce problème est facile. Difficile. Difficult. Difficile. Difficile. Difficult. Très difficile. Very difficult. Très difficile. Près de. Near. Près de. Près de. Near. Je vis près de l'université. I live near the university. Je vis 
près de l'université. Loin. Far. Loin. Loin. Far. La gare est loin d'ici. The station is far from here. La gare est loin d'ici. Petit. Small. Petit. Petit. Small. Ce pull est trop petit. The sweater is too small. Ce pull est trop petit. Remember, the goal of this series is to build a vocabulary of the 800 most common words and phrases in French. If that sounds like a lot, don't worry, we can help you. Click the link in the description to access the full list. You will also get example sentences, custom flashcard decks, and more learning resources at frenchpod101.com. See you next time! Au revoir! How to ask for and give directions. Let's begin! The first pattern is Où est le, la, les? Où est le, la, les? Where is the? Où means where. There is a grave accent on où to tell the difference between où, which means or, but the pronunciation remains the same. Here is a simple sentence. Où est la banque? Which means where is the bank? The next pattern is Je dois aller au. Je dois aller au. This means I need to go to the. Je dois means I have to or I need to and comes from devoir, which is an irregular verb. For example, you can say je dois aller au commissariat, which means I need to go to the police station. Comment puis-je aller au? Comment puis-je aller au? This means how do I get to the? Comment means how. Puis-je means can I. Aller means to go. And O is the preposition you need to use before masculine nouns. For example, you can say, Comment puis-je aller au musée? Which means, how do I get to the museum? Est-ce qu'il y a un, une, près d'ici? Est-ce qu'il y a un, une, près d'ici? This means, is there a, near here? For example, Est-ce qu'il y a une bibliothèque près d'ici? Means, is there a library near here? Don't get confused with librairie and bibliothèque. Librairie means bookshop. Library in French is bibliothèque. The next pattern is, excusez-moi, savez-vous où est le, la? Excusez-moi, savez-vous où est le, la? This means, excuse me, do you know where the m is? When you don't know the person you are speaking to, use vous instead of tu. Both mean you, but tu is informal and vous is formal. For example, you can say, excusez-moi, savez-vous où est le parc? Which means, excuse me, do you know where is the park? Est-ce que le, la, m est loin d'ici? Est-ce que le, la, m est loin d'ici? This means is the, m far from here. Est-ce que literally means is it that? A convenience of everyday French is that a phrase can easily be turned from a statement into a question. For example, you can say, est-ce que la poste est loin d'ici? Which means is the post office far from here? Tournez à gauche. Tournez à gauche. This means turn left. This is the basic indication to go left. The first word tourner means turn. It is followed by à, which means to. Lastly, we have gauche, which means left. For example, you can say tournez à gauche au deuxième pâté de maison, which means turn left at the second block. Tournez à droite. Tourner à droite. This means turn right. 
This is similar to turn left, you just have to substitute gauche with droite, which means right. For example, you can say tournez à droite au troisième feu de circulation, which means turn right at the third traffic light. Allez tout droit. Allez tout droit. This means go straight. This is the basic indication to go straight. The first word aller means go and ends in the imperative form. The next two words tout droit mean straight. For example, you can say aller tout droit, puis tournez à gauche au prochain feu, which means go straight and turn left at the next light. Passer devant. Passer devant. This means go past. Passer means to pass and passer devant means to go past. Devant is a preposition meaning in front of. For example, you can say passer devant l'église, which means go past the church. À l'angle de. À l'angle de. This means at the corner of. This sentence may help you to indicate a particular place. For example, you can say c'est à l'angle de l'avenue, meaning it's at the corner of this avenue. An avenue is a big, wide street in an urban area. En face de. En face de. This means in front of. For example, la station de bus est en face du supermarché. This means the bus station is in front of the supermarket. Traveling in France by bus is easy and cheap. Every city has its own public transit system. Of course, it's easier if you speak a little French. Derrière. Derrière. This means behind. For example, le parking se trouve derrière la salle de cinéma. This means the parking lot is behind the movie theater. Se trouver is a transitive verb that means to be located somewhere or can be found. It can be about an object or a person. À côté de. À côté de. This means next to. À côté de means next to or nearby and is a very common word in French. It is used to indicate the relative physical positions of one thing to another. For example, you can say Le restaurant est à côté du parc, which means the restaurant is next to the park. Entre. Entre. This means between. For example, you can say, le magasin est entre le café et l'animalerie, which means the store is between the coffee shop and the pet store. In French, café refers to both the drink and the place where you can drink it. Animalerie is a pet shop. 10 phrases to help you in an emergency. Let's begin. Appelez la police, s'il vous plaît. Call the police, please! Use this phrase when you need someone to call the police. In France, you call 17. They should be called if there is a need of police intervention. For example, an accident on a public highway, public disorder, aggression, a robbery, a burglary, etc. Avez-vous de la fièvre? Do you have a fever? Use this phrase when you want to check someone's temperature. Generally, when seeing this sentence, you place your hand on the person's forehead to feel if it's warm. Oh! J'ai perdu mon passeport. I lost my passport. Use this phrase when, unfortunately for yourself, you lose your passport. In this situation, find and contact the nearest embassy or consulate from your country. Ouf. Je pense que j'ai mangé quelque chose de mauvais. I think I ate something bad. Use this phrase when you are not feeling very well due to intestinal discomfort and you want something to help the pain. J'ai besoin d'un médecin. I need a doctor. Use this phrase when you are not feeling very well. If you are sick, you must see a doctor. Je ne retrouve pas le chemin jusqu'à mon hôtel. I can't find a way back to my hotel. Use this phrase when you are lost and can't go back to your hotel. 
In this situation, you can try to find a reputable store. Explain your situation to one of the employees and they will maybe help you. An offline map app is also useful. Y a-t-il une pharmacie dans le coin? Is there a pharmacy nearby? Use this phrase when you need to find a pharmacy without going too far. Do not hesitate to ask a shopkeeper around you. They might know better than the average person on the street. Pourriez-vous m'aider? Can you help me? Use this phrase when you need assistance and you want to ask someone. You can add excusez-moi, excuse me, at the beginning of the sentence to be more polite. Je suis perdu. I am lost. Use this phrase when you are lost. As I already said, do not hesitate to ask to someone like a storekeeper or a police officer to help you. J'ai besoin d'une ambulance. I need an ambulance. Use this phrase when you need an ambulance to come. Usually you can call 112, the European emergency number, even if you don't speak French. Want to speak real French from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at frenchpod101.com. Five sentence patterns for beginners. Let's start. Je m'appelle. My name is. You can use this when you introduce yourself to others. Using this pattern, you can say Je m'appelle Claude, which means my name is Claude. Je suis de. I am from. Use this when people ask you where you're from or when you want to include it as a part of your self-introduction. Où est? Where is? Here we have où est, which means where is. For example, you can use it to say où est la gare, which means where is the station. It's very useful when you are lost in France. J'aime. I like. When you want to express that you like something, you can use this pattern. J'aime. In French, to like and to love are both translated with the verb aimer. If you want to sound less passionate, you can add the adjective bien. For example, j'aime bien le chocolat. If chocolate is really your thing, you can say j'adore le chocolat. Adorer is a verb we can translate as to love or to adore. In a sentence, you can say j'aime le chocolat to mean I like chocolate. Je n'aime pas. I don't like. You can use this pattern when you want to express that you don't like something. For example, you can say je n'aime pas les choux de Bruxelles, which means I don't like Brussels sprouts. Top 10 language learning strategies. So let's begin. Liez-vous d'amitié ou mettez-vous en couple avec une personne Française. Befriending or dating someone who speaks French. So I think that's a really great strategy to, to learn the language if you speak every day with a person that is your friend or your boyfriend. Regardez des films ou écoutez de la musique en français. Watching movies or listening to music in French. So I think it can help you to learn the language more easily if every day you watch some movies if, even with subtitles, like this, it helps you to see what is written and everything. Lisez des journaux français ou magazines français. Read French newspapers or French magazines. So that will help you very much with the language because you will see words that you've never seen before. And eventually you can look them up in the dictionary and like this you can know what it means. Enregistrez votre voix et comparer votre prononciation avec des Français natifs. Record your voice and compare your pronunciation with native French speakers. So I think that really helps with the accent. Like this, you can hear how you sound. You can watch my videos again and like this, you can compare how I speak with how you speak and you see if it matches or not. Télécharger des pistes de dialogue et écouter les conversations françaises. Download dialogue tracks and listen to French conversations. 
So that will really help you with the accents, you know, the way everybody talks. You will be able to learn new words and you will be able to, for example, if they ask a question, you're able to answer. Répétez les expressions que vous entendez à voix haute, encore et encore. Repeat the phrases that you hear out loud again and again. So I think that's a really good strategy in order to learn French to repeat over and over again what you just listened to or what you just learned because it will help you uh, to have that in your mind and you'll be able to say it more easily. Revoyez toutes les leçons sur frenchpod101.com pour les maîtriser complètement. Review all the lessons on frenchpod101.com to master them completely. That will really help you to speak better French if uh, you go back and review all the videos that I have done or other French native have done. Um, and yeah, like this, you will be able to master it really completely and you'll be able to use it in quite a few different um, situations. Lisez les phrases lentement au début, après relisez-les et augmentez votre vitesse. Read sentences slowly at first, then reread them and increase your speed. I think that's a really thing to do because at first you want to have the pronunciation right. So it's better, you know, to decompose the word little by little and then see when you're going to be more comfortable, you'll be able to say it like really quickly. Donnez-vous des petits et mesurables objectifs pour apprendre avec des dates limites propres. Set small and measurable learning goals with your personal deadline. So I think that's really good if you give yourself some deadline and do not try to learn too much at first because you might just quit if you do that. So that's better if you give yourself, you know, little by little to, to learn and uh, give yourself deadline as well. That's a re really good thing to see if you improve or not. Essayez des leçons qui sont plus difficiles pour vous surpasser et vous améliorer rapidement. Try harder lessons to challenge yourself and improve faster. So at first you're going to learn those quick and simple words, but then you want to challenge yourself and learn more complex sentences, for example. So that's better if you try to learn harder lessons. Computer words. I don't know anything about computer, come on. <laughs> so computer words, let's go. Clavier, uh, keyboard, taper a text avec le clavier type text on keyboard. It's the same word as piano and everything that has um, touch. Some those little squares. <laughs> Buttons, yeah. <laughs> what am I saying? <laughs> <laughs> Souris, mouse. Same as English, the mouse is a so little animal. So, souris. Uh, cliquez avec la souris. Click with the mouse. Next one is Casque audio. Casque audio is headphones, so listening music with my headphones. Écoutez de la musique dans le casque audio. You can also just say casque, you don't have to add the audio at the end. Moniteur, monitor. Oh. <laughs> Regardez un film sur le moniteur. Watching a movie on the monitor. That's because I like movies. Imprimante. Imprimante is a printer, so imprimé avec l'imprimante, print with a printer, <laughs> does that work? Jobs, hey, that's a nice one. So jobs, first job is infirmière. Nurse, mon père est infirmier, my dad is a nurse, which is true. Hi. <laughs> infirmière is uh, for women and infirmier will be for men. Officier de police, police officer. Or you can just say policier. Ce policier est trop méchant. This police officer is so mean. <laughs> C'est un gentil officier de police. It's a nice police officer. He showed me the way and stuff. Employé de bureau. Office worker. It looks boring being an office worker. <laughs> Je suis employé de bureau. I'm an office worker. Simple. Next one. Ingénieur. 
an engineer. Um, wouldn't it be nice to marry an engineer? Ce serait plutôt sympa de se marier avec un ingénieur, non? Yeah, I said something nice. Great. Uh, programmer, which is programmer. Uh, I thought we did computer world already. <laughs> Le programmeur programme un programme. The programmer is programming a program. <laughs> Three times the same word. You can use it easily. Et? Le programmeur fait un jeu. The programmer is making a game. Which would be super nice. <laughs> so, hi and welcome back to Weekly French World. This week's theme is... The weather. Ah, this should be nice. First word is... Chaud. Chaud is uh, warm. Aujourd'hui, il fait chaud. Today is warm. Which is true. Next one is uh, clair. Clear. Clair is also used for light. Like... E. Clair is a lot of light. But also the weather is good and no cloud and stuff like this. Le temps est clair. The weather is clear. <laughs> Next one. Ensoleillé. Sunny. If you study well the last week words, uh, la ville de Nice est ensoleillée. Nice is sunny. <laughs> Do you remember it? <laughs> it also works. So, Nice est une ville ensoleillée. Nice is a sunny city. <laughs> Next one. Next one is humid. Humid. Mm. It's humid in my room. Dans ma chambre, il fait humide. Which happens a lot in France. <laughs> Next one is... Mm, mm, nuageux. Cloudy. The weather outside is cloudy. That's not it. <laughs> in north of France, the weather outside is cloudy. Dans le nord de la France, le temps est souvent nuageux. <laughs> it's often cloudy. So yeah. <laughs> the end. <laughs> So, see you next week for the World French Word of the Week. And don't forget to check the website to get more words and more explanation. And don't forget to come back next week. See you! Hi everybody, Candice here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, while I answer your most common French questions. The question for this lesson is, what are some popular French idioms? In English, we have our fair share of idioms like it's raining cats and dogs, or even what's up. They might not make much sense literally, but they are commonly used in everyday conversation. French, of course, has them too, and here are some examples. Faire la tête means to sulk, but its literal translation is actually to do the head. It's used when someone isn't happy about something and in a bad mood. For example, elle a fait la tête toute la journée. She sulked all day. We also have coup de foudre, which literally means a strike of lightning. But as an idiom, it means love at first sight. Pretty fitting, actually. Sa marche is one you'll come across every day. Marcher means to walk, but sa marche means that's works. English speakers might recognize this following one. Il fait un temps de chien, literally. It's a dog weather. It means, as you might have guessed, it's terrible weather. Here's a funny one. Arriver comme un cheveu sur la soupe. It literally means to arrive like a hair in the soup. This is about entering a situation at the worst possible moment. It can also mean arriving suddenly, by chance. Another idiom that uses food is mettre son grain de sel, literally, to put one's grain of salt. It's an idiom that means to give an unnecessary opinion. Donner sa langue au chat, literally, means to give one's tongue to the cat but it actually means to give up. For example, if someone asks you to guess something and you have no idea what the answer is. Another one that doesn't make much sense, but you'll often hear is faire la grasse matinée, which literally means to do a fat morning, but people use it to say they slept in. Ça coûte les yeux de la tête which means it's ridiculously expensive, but literally means it costs the eyes out of the head. There you go, try them out. Mm -hmm.
If you have any more questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. A bientôt! Hi everybody, Candice here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I answer your most common French questions. The question for this lesson is How do you know when to use le passé composé or l'imparfait? There are two commonly used past tenses in French le passé composé, the past perfect, and l'imparfait, the imperfect. Le passé composé is made up of an auxiliary verb, either être, meaning to be, or avoir, to have, plus the main verb in the participe passé or past participle form. L'imparfait just use the main verb in the imperfect form. Let's do some examples so you can learn how to use le passé composé and l'imparfait correctly. When telling a story in the past, le passé composé is used for the sequence of events. These are specific events that happened at a certain time, like j'ai mangé une pomme, meaning I ate an apple. L'imparfait is used for describing context or circumstances that happened within that time frame. For example, je mangeais une pomme, I was eating an apple. You'll often use l'imparfait and le passé composé together in the same sentence. L'imparfait illustrates the context and le passé composé is the disruption of an action. For example, this sentence uses both. Je mangeais une pomme quand Loïc a appelé, meaning I was eating an apple when Loïc called. Je mangeais une pomme sets the scene. I was eating an apple. Quand means when, that's the interruption. The interruption is a time-specific event. So we use le passé composé, Loïc a appelé, meaning Loïc called. That's it for this lesson. Hey guys! It's Pierre from France and welcome back for more videos on French learning. Today's video will be about casual French. Like you know, maybe you've noticed that, but French people when they speak as a casual way, the way they speak is really different from the way you've learned French at school. So here I'm going to explain what are the three, three main rules that are um, used in casual French. So first, this is the elision of the negation. This is really common and more and more French people are doing that, even in non-casual situation. This is, you get rid of the ne and the n. So for example, here, je ne sais pas, je ne sais pas, like I don't know. So you've learned that when you add the negation, you have to add ne and then the negation, like pas. But in in practice, we get rid of it. So here you say, je sais pas, je sais pas. This is casual. Um, like if you want to stay polite, stay, like um, remain more polite, it's better to say that. But je sais pas, like I use that with my parents, with my family, with my friends. So this is uh, really common. And same when you have the N, which is the same word, just because here there is a vowel, you get rid of the E. So, il n'y a personne, il n'y a personne. So, I, again, like here, this is the negation, and you've got the N, like the couple negative word and N. Il n'y a personne, il y a personne, il y a personne. So, here, nothing, il y a personne, just this negation. The meaning is nobody's here, nobody's here. Il y a personne, il n'y a personne, il y a personne. So this is really easy. Like you just get rid of that. No, no specific rule, like really easy. And I think this is really easy to get used to it. So this was the first one. The second one is the non-inversion. When you ask a question in French, you have to do the inversion and it's quite similar in English. But usually in, a casual, in casual situations, you don't do the inversion. So when you say, es-tu arrivé? Like, did you arrive? Es-tu arrivé? You just say, tu es arrivé. So here, like if it was not a question, tu es arrivé. So like to make the distinction between like an affirmative sentence and an, um, a question, 
this is the tonality and the context that will um, help you to understand if it's a question or not. Tu es arrivé? Tu es arrivé? Tu es arrivé. Like, this is quite subtle, especially here, because there is no con context. But um, usually it's not that hard to understand the difference. Tu es arrivé? Usually you go up at the end of the sentence. Tu es arrivé? Tu es arrivé? And yeah, you can guess with the context. So here you have that. But sometimes, you know, there is interrogative uh, words like comment, like in English, how. How do you make it? Comment fais-tu? Here, you can, there is two ways to become more casual. Comment tu fais? So here again, you don't do the inversion. But there is one other possibility, which is putting this at the end of the sentence. And of course, you don't do the inversion. So tu fais comment? Comment fais-tu? Comment tu fais? Tu fais comment? So here you see that you can like make uh, the order that you want for all these sentences for for these like those three sentences exactly the same meaning. Like those two one or like there is no subtlety of meaning between those two. Um, here it's more polite, but here it's like really equivalent. So you can choose what you want and it's not only applicable like you can also use that for with other interrogative nouns and you can also do that with um, other interrogative words like combien how much or um, how old like quel age but there is one exception that you you need you need to keep in mind is que so the when you ask a question, you say, que fais-tu? Which is quite polite. What are you doing? What are you doing? Que fais-tu? In polite situation. You cannot use uh, the non-inversion. You cannot say, que tu fais? No meaning in that. It's totally wrong. So, what you can do is putting that at the end of the sentence. But if you do that, you don't use que, but you use quoi? Tu fais quoi? What are you doing? Tu fais quoi? So just remember that, like que and quoi, it's quite different. Like there is uh, this little trick that you have to keep in mind. But basically, you don't do the inversion when you ask a question. And I think you can do that in English as well. So this is quite similar. So those two, two rules, elision of the negation on and non-inversion, are quite uh, easy to understand. And like you will easily get used to it. But the last one is a bit more complicated because there are some rules. This is contractions, contractions. You know, like you can do some contractions in French, but in casual situations, you can do even more contractions. So here there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven rules that I'm going to show you. And those with this, you will be able to do casual contractions in French. So first, je. You know that when there is je and then a vowel, you have to do a contraction. But in casual situations, you can also do a contraction with a consonant. So in casual situations, with je, you always do a contraction. Je plus a consonant becomes j. So for example, je bois du vin. It means like I drink wine. I'm drinking wine. Je bois du vin. Je bois. Je bois, je bois, je bois, je bois. So this is really casual. If you want to remain, like, if you want to be polite, it's better to say that. But with your friends, je bois will be way more natural. Here again, there is M, which is a consonant. Je m'appelle Pierre, je m'appelle Pierre, je m'appelle. So here you can see that there is two contractions, but uh, it's like it's not as it is a common contraction, you, you don't pay attention to that. It's like the M, which is important. So you say just, je m'appelle. So here it's really easy and like it's better to say, je m'appelle with your friends than je m'appelle Pierre. But once again, if you say that, like if you don't do the contractions or even if you don't do those two, those two rules, like the elision of the non-inversion, it's definitely okay. It's just like if you really want to sound like a typical young French, it's better to know those rules. But like, who cares if you can speak like a young French? Like the, in a language, what is important is to be understood. So it, I'm just introducing you those rules. 
like that, you will be able to understand them. So this is with je. But there is one additional rule with je. It's when there is an s. So s is a consonant. So you can do either that, just that, or changing this sound into sh. So here, you remember that? Je ne sais pas. Je sais pas. So here we are going to use the elision and also the contraction. So you can say je sais pas if you apply this rule. Je sais pas. Je, ne sais, je sais pas. Je sais pas. But it's quite hard to say je sais. Je sais pas. Maybe you have difficulties to say it. So usually, French people also say je sais pas. Je sais pas. Je suis pas. Je sais pas. I don't know if you can hear the difference, but um, it's way easier for the mouth and the tongue to say je sais pas instead of je sais pas. But you can say both. But um, personally, I use this one a lot. Je sais pas. So here is an exa another example. Je suis perdu. I mean, like, something like I'm lost. Je suis perdu. Je suis perdu. Je suis perdu. Or je suis perdu. Je suis perdu. Je suis perdu. Can you hear the difference? It's quite subtle. But anyway, this, if you have difficulties to say that, just use the sound CH. And let's move on to the next one, which is with tu. So you know tu, there is no contraction usually, usually with tu. So here, in casual French, you can add one contraction when there is a vowel. Like you cannot do the contraction when there is um, a consonant, but when there is a vowel, you can do the contraction. So here, for example, tu as faim? It's a question, and you can notice like I'm doing again the non-inversion here. Tu as faim? T'as faim. Tu as faim? T'as faim. This is shorter, and we use that, this a lot. So here, there is a vowel, so we can do the contraction. But here, tu manges. You, ca you cannot do the, any contraction here. You have to say tu manges, even in casual situation. Tu manges. And let's move on to the next one, which is il. Here again, this is only with consonants. So there is nothing you can do, no contraction you can do usually with il. It's like tu. But here, with consonant and consonant only, not vowel this time, you can do a kind of contraction, which is turning il into i. Like with a y, but uh, you say i. So when you say il mange quoi? Question. Again, like you can see that I'm using this pattern. What are you doing? Tu fais quoi? Il mange quoi? So I'm using this pattern. Uh, il mange quoi? 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 But here, if there is a vowel, il était malade. You cannot do any contraction. You have to say, il était malade. Il était malade. You cannot just use i. So, il mange quoi? Il mange quoi? And there is one exception, like, which is not really a kind of exception, but uh, like it's, like, it's not like a contraction, but it's an elision of il. It's when you hear il y a. For example, il y a deux ans, two years ago, il y a deux ans. Instead of doing il y a, you just say ya. Like, you get rid of this and you add this to the, this letter and you say ya. Ya. Il y a deux ans, ya deux ans, two years ago. Il y a deux ans, formal situation, casual situation, ya deux ans, two years ago. So we've seen je, tu, il, like personal pronoun. But here is another form of, like, the equivalent of je is me, the equivalent of tu is te, and the equivalent of il is se. So here, with that, there is also a contraction that you can do when there is, again, a consonant. Because usually, when there is a vowel, you do the contraction. But here, in casual French, you can do also the contraction with the consonant. So here, like, the same rule is applied. Je me fais à manger. Je me fais à manger, like I'm cooking for myself. I'm cooking myself. Je me fais à manger, I'm cooking for myself. So you can say, je me fais, je me fais, je me fais. Je me fais, je me fais. But 
you see that there is also here je and a consonant. So you can also do je me fais, but you cannot do both because it's really hard. You cannot say the two contraction in the same time. The idea of a contraction is to speak easier, like to have an easy way to speak and a faster way to speak. Um, but here it's really hard to say if you try to do the two contractions. So we don't do that. We never do that. So here you have to choose between one of the two and it's exactly the same meaning. There is no, no nuance in the meaning. So je me fais, je, je me fais, je me fais, je me fais, je me fais. Formal situation, je me fais. And then you can choose in casual situation, je me fais or je me fais. I don't know if you can hear the difference, but again, as long as you can understand when someone say je me fais, like you don't care which kind of contraction he used, what is important is you understand the meaning of the sentence. So here again with te, tu te promènes, tu te promènes, tu te promènes, tu te promènes, tu te promènes. Like I think it's quite hard to hear my T sometimes. Tu te promènes. Tu te promènes. So this is a way to contract um, the, the, the te. Tu te promènes, tu te promènes, tu te promènes, tu te promènes. So again, consonant here, P, you can do the contraction. And here, il se couche tôt, 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 il se couche tôt. Il se couche tôt, il se couche tôt. Like he is going to bed early. Il se couche tôt. And here, you can also use this rule, because here there is il plus a consonant. Il se couche tôt. And here you can apply both rules. You can do this one and this one. Unlike in this situation, you can do with il, you can uh, tr transform the il into i. So, it means like you have to say, iskushto, 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 il skushto, iskushto, il se kushto, formal situation, il skushto, casual situation, and iskushto, even more casual, like it's like the same casuality, like the, the same casualness, il skushto, iskushto. So don't, like, don't focus too much on the difference, there is no real difference between those two. So here you can, like just keep in mind that you can do the contraction with that and here you cannot, like the two contractions you cannot and here you can do the two contractions. The reason is it's really easy to say when you do the two contractions here and you, it's not easy to say when you do the con two contractions here. So if you want a real reason for what we can do two contractions here and not two here, it's because it's easy to say in French. Is couche Really easy, no, dif no, any, no, no difficulties. And let's move on to another one, which is again with E, which is, but this time is LE and DE. And again, when there is a consonant, you can say L or DE. Usually you have to do that again when there is a vowel, but here you can also, in casual situations, again, you can do with a consonant. So, when you say J'ai pas le temps, j'ai pas le temps, j'ai pas le temps, this is like formal, the formal form. You can say, j'ai pas le temps, j'ai pas le temps, j'ai pas le temps, j'ai pas le temps, okay. like formal situation, j'ai pas le temps, and in a, a casual situation, j'ai pas le temps, j'ai pas le temps, j'ai pas le temps. So here it's with le, but here is an example with de, le train, va de Paris à Marseille. Le train va de Paris à Marseille. Like the train goes from Paris to Mar Marseille, which is a city in the south of France. And here, I forgot to translate that, but j'ai pas le temps, like I don't have time. Quite easy, I don't have time. J'ai pas le temps, pas le temps. So here, le train va de Paris à Marseille. 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 Usually, like it's, sometimes it's quite easy, difficult to say deep, the, those two sounds. So sometimes the D turns into a kind of T. Le train va de Paris à Marseille. Le train va de Paris à Marseille. 
le train va de Paris à Marseille. This is not exactly a D, not exactly a T, it's like a kind of in-between, but don't focus too much on, on that. As long as you can understand again, this is quite fine. Le train va de Paris à Marseille. This one, like, I think, le train va de Paris à Marseille, I would use both. Like, even in casual situations, I think I, I might also say de Paris à Marseille. But uh, I guess it depends on the feeling. Le train va de Paris à Marseille. Le train va de Paris à Marseille. So, again, le de, with only consonant. Because usually you can do the contraction when there is a vowel. No need to be in a casual situation. And the last one is like a kind of, some sort of general rule of what we've seen. Because here you've noticed that there is e. Here again, e, 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 e. Like e in English, but e is the French way to say e in English, in French. So here, you do, you can do a contraction when there is a consonant. But, in fact, you can do a contraction with e, like you can always do a contraction with e when there is a consonant just after uh, e. So it's also something that is true in the middle of words. So here, when I say petit cheval, like a small horse, petit cheval, small horse, you can say petit cheval, petit cheval. Here, I get rid of the e here, and here again, because there is a vowel, uh, there is a consonant here, t, the t and the v, so I can say petit cheval, petit cheval, petit cheval. It's not like, you can say just one if you want, or the two, or even none of them, but um, like, it's quite common to say that, petit cheval. And here, I'm just gonna do the contraction for cheval, petit cheval, petit cheval. So here, I just get rid of the E, of the E in cheval. Petit cheval, petit cheval. So petit cheval, full sentence, petit cheval, and then petit cheval. So here, I just did one contraction, and I'm gonna do the two contractions. Petit cheval, petit cheval. And here is another one which is really common in French, even in non-casual situation. This is the verb acheter. Acheter, to buy in English. You have, because here there is an E and there is T, you can say acheter, acheter. But there is one subtility. You know that sometimes when you use the conjugations of this verb, you can add the accent. For example, when you say j'achète, here, there is an accent. So here, like this rule, you can only use it when there is no accent. Here there is an accent, so you cannot, like I don't know how you would manage to do it, because it's really hard, you cannot do the contraction here. But if there is no accent in the middle of the word, you can do this contraction. So this, with the verb acheter, you can do the contraction sometimes when there is no accent. Acheter, acheter du pain to buy some bread, acheter du pain, acheter, acheter, acheter. No contraction, acheter, with the contraction, acheter. So, here we've seen that this is kind of generalization of those rules. So, so far we've seen that we can do the elision of the negation. Ne, you get rid of it. You can also get rid of the mandatory inversion in questions. Es-tu arrivé? Tu es arrivé. With some exceptions that you have to keep in mind with que. And also contractions which are really important in casual French with all those rules. Je, tu, il, me, te, se, le, de, and e in middle of words. So now you know how to use that, but maybe you don't know when to use that. Like, the distinction between casual and formal is not quite true. Like, in many situations at shops and stuff like that, you will do sometimes the contractions. But what, what you have to keep in mind as a French learner is um, the less contractions and the less casual French you use, the clearer you are. So, like, sometimes when a friend don't understand what I'm saying, when I will repeat the sentence, even if it's a French person, 
I will use, I will get rid of all those rules. I will say the full sentences because it's clearer to speak with that. So if you're not confident with the French pronunciation, I think it's better not to use that. So why learning that? I think it's also important to learn that because when you speak to someone like a French person, he can sometimes speak with that. Like this, this person can sometimes use casual French. So it's good to know that to be able to understand what he is saying. But for you, the, what is important is to be understood. So just use uh, like full sentences instead of using contractions and stuff like that if you're not confident enough. Well, that's all for today and thank you for watching this video. If you Hey guys, this is Pierre from France. Today's lesson, we will target present tense. So you know in French, you've got a lot of tense and the most basic one is the présent, present. Although the name is quite explicit and quite similar to the English word and the English tense, we need to explain to you some subtleties, some nuances that uh, are happening with uh, the usage of uh, the, past, the present tense. So first we will target the usage, then I will show you how to form it, and then we will do some exercise to be sure that you understood everything. So let's get started with the usage. So here you can see five different usages. So the first one is current actions. So like in English, when you want to explain an action that is being done, you use present. So here, first example, je mange du pain. Here the verb is in red, manger, mange. Je mange du pain. In English, you can translate that by, you can use I am eating bread or I eat bread. I am eating bread or I eat bread. Je mange du pain. So here, one way to translate that is to use the present in English as well, but also you can use the progressive one, I am eating, I am eating bread. So this is current actions. In English, you can use present or progressive present, but in French, it's generally just present. Here you've got another example, il a faim, il a faim. He is hungry, he is hungry, il a faim, the verb here, avoir, a, present. So basically here you're expressing a feeling. So for a feeling, you usually just uh, use the present. So that's current actions or current feelings. So here, what you're doing, I'm eating bread, je mange du pain, you use present. Or il a, um, il a faim, I am hungry, this is my feeling, this is the current action, the action of feeling something. So this is present. So I think this is quite similar to the English one. Um, so this is um, something really simple for you to understand. Um, remember that in many different situations you translate progressive present with uh, present, simple present in French. So th is, this was the first one for current actions. Then you've got another one which is when an action has started before but is still underway. So basically here Je fais du tennis depuis 10 ans. I have been playing tennis for 10 years. So here, the tense that you use in English is not present. This is to be doing something. You use to be doing something. I have been playing tennis for 10 years. Je fais du tennis depuis 10 ans. Here, this is présent. Présent. Je fais. Je fais. So like you're not doing actually tennis, like you're not currently playing tennis, but for 10 years you have been regularly uh, doing some tennis, so you use, and you're still doing it, so you use présent, present, je fais. So this is an action that started, but is still underway. So here, you started before, but you're still doing it. So this is something that can be translated. Um, this is, present is a way to translate to be doing something in French. Then you've got true facts, true facts. Il s'appelle Pierre. So this is my name, Pierre. Il s'appelle Pierre. My name is Pierre, or his name is Pierre, here. His name is Pierre. This is true. Il s'appelle 
Pierre. This is a fact that is true, so we use present here. But here is like something that is uh, like general, like um, a general truth. La Terre tourne autour du Soleil. The Earth revolves around the Sun. So this is true, and you need to use present to express that. And in English as well, you use present. So this is similar. For facts, true facts, you use present like in English. Then the next one is habits. When you, ha when you want to express an, an habit that you have, you need to use the present in French. For example, if you are um, vegetarians and you want to say that you only eat vegetables, you can say, je ne mange que des légumes. Je ne mange que des légumes. I only eat vegetables. Légumes, vegetables. I only eat vegetables. So here, that's an habit that you have. Like, you, when you eat, it's always vegetables. So here you use present. Je ne mange que des légumes. Another example is, chaque lundi, je vais au cinéma. Chaque lundi, je vais au cinéma. Every Monday, you go to cinema. You go to the theater. So here, chaque lundi, je vais au cinéma. This is a habit that you have. So you need to use present. Like you, this is an action that you do regularly. Here, every Monday. Chaque lundi, je vais au cinéma. Every Monday, I go to the theater. So this is an habit. And the last one is actions about to happen. If you want to say that you will arrive at 2 p.m., in English you use will arrive, but you can also say I arrived at 2 p.m. In French, this is more common to use just present. So if you want to say that you want to underpin that the action is really about to happen, like it means you will really arrive soon, you can just drop the future and use the present. J'arrive vers 14 heures. J'arrive vers 14 heures. I will arrive at 2 p.m. or literally, I arrive at 2 p.m. You can also use the future here, but when you say, that you, when you use the present, it means like it's really about to happen. So that's something that is almost done. Another example here is, je regarde un dernier épisode, puis je dors. So here you've got two verbs that are in present. Je regarde un dernier épisode, puis je dors. So I watch one last episode and then I go to sleep. So here it's present, but you still haven't watched your episode yet. Je regarde un dernier épisode. I'm about to watch one more episode and then I will go to bed. But here, because you want to, uh, you about to start, but you still haven't started yet, you use present. Je regarde un dernier épisode. Et puis je dors. Here again, you, when you say you use the present, it means, okay, it's, I'm soon going to go to bed. It's just one last episode. So this is uh, like really about to happen as well. So for the two verbs, you use present. So you've got five different kind of usages. Current actions, actions that have started but are still underway, true facts, habits, and actions about to happen. This is slightly different uh, from English, so be sure to understand the difference. Basically, when you use, I have been playing or I have been doing something, usually in French it's translated with present. And when you say, uh, I am doing something, I am eating, for example, in most of the case, you will translate in French uh, with um, something in present, a verb in present. I am eating. Je mange. But it's not always the case, but that's like kind of a tendency. So th you've got this pattern and this pattern that are sometimes translated into English. So in most cases, you will use English present and French present in the same um, situations. But sometimes you've got some differences. As you can see here, to be doing something, here it's present, or to have been doing something, here it's Again, it's present. And sometimes the will, like for the future, is dropped. 
So I will arrive, just j'arrive. So be careful with that and remember all those usages. Now let's move on how, on how to form that. The first thing that you need to know when you learn the difference between all the forms in French is the groups. So you know that there are four different groups. The first group, the second group, the third group, and then the auxiliaries. So I'm going to explain it once again. The first group is all the verbs with ending with ER. ER, so here you've got an example, to walk, marcher. It's a verb from the first group, words ending with ER. Then you've got the second group with verbs ending with I or, I or, I or. But it's not all the verbs ending with I or. Some of them are in the third group, so be careful. But most of them are um, in the second group. And then you've got the irregular verbs that are all the other verbs and they are like really uh, tricky because you need to learn by heart how to change their form. So that's kind of a pain but you, need to re you really need to know that because it's usually made of really common verbs like pouvoir, to be able to, or vouloir, to want. You need to learn those. So this is something that you need to be careful. First group, second group, third group. And sometimes verb ending with IR are also in the third group. And then you've got the two auxiliaries. The two auxiliaries in French are avoir and être, to have and to be. So here is uh, the conjugaison, the, the different um, forms for all of the verbs, all of the categories, and for the present only. So here, the, what is good with the first two categories, the first two group, is it's regular. You've got no exceptions. So here is the verb marcher, to walk. Je marche, i at the end. Tu marches, is at the end. Il, elle marche, i at the end. Nous marchons, o and s at the end. Vous marchez, i, z. And then il, elle marche, e and t. So what you need to do is just get rid of the ending, the er, and you add always the same ending. So this is really simple. Be sure to learn all these, those endings and you will be able to do the, change, the changement for the form for all the verbs of this group. And then this is similar in the second group except the ending is a bit different. So here if we take this verb finir, to finish, you've got fini, fini, fini with a t, finissons, finissez, finis. So here be sure to check the s, the s and the t and then those differences. And if you know the verb, you know it's a second group, you just get rid of the ir and you add the correct ending depending on the subject. So that's how you do that. And then be careful, once again, if some verbs ending with ir are from irregular verbs group. So be careful, you need to know that. And I'm not going to explain all the irregularities because otherwise it would be too long. But here are the two auxiliaries and you really need to know them. So here it's for the present. Je, here because it's starting with the vowel you get rid of the i. Then tu as, il a, nous avons, vous avez, ils ont. And then for the verb to be, suis, je suis, tu es, il est, nous sommes, vous êtes, and ils sont. Ils sont. So this is what you need to remember for uh, the present. And then learn the irregular verbs. So this is really simple. Like this is the easiest tense in French. And this is the most common one. So basically, we are lucky for that. Um, so just remember all those endings. And now let's do some practice because it's always good to, after a lesson, to practice. So here are three different sentences with um, a gap here and I want you to complete with the verbs in blue here. So here you've got tu and then the verb pleurer, it means to cry, and then pour un rien. 
So can you try by yourself to complete? I'm going to show you the answer after showing you all the examples. So here, il, something, the verb guérir, to cure or to heal. Plus vite que ce que je pensais. Il, mm -hmm, plus vite que ce que je pensais. And then the last one, je, the verb to be, être, être, toujours le dernier. So if you have difficulties to understand the meaning of the sentences, I'm going to translate that into English. Tu uh, pour rien, you're crying for nothing. Then the second one is, he is healing faster than I was expecting. And then the last one, I am always the last one. So here you've got the three verbs, try it by yourself and then I will show you the answers. Okay, so the answers are pleurer, pleurer ends with er, so it's first group. So the subject is tu, tu, es, so you just get rid of er and you add es and you've got pleure. Tu pleures pour un rien. You cry for nothing. Then, guérir. Guérir. I R. Luckily, this is a second group verb. So you just check the subject. Il. Il. You see here, I T. So this is. Guéri. You get rid of the IT and you add I, the I, you get rid of the I or and you add IT here. And the last one, verb être, here, je, être, toujours le dernier, je, the subject, here, verb, so je suis toujours le dernier. So I'm gonna repeat once again, tu pleures pour un rien. You cry for nothing. Il guérit plus vite que ce que je pensais. He is healing faster than I was expecting. Je suis toujours le dernier. I'm always the last one. So this was the first exercise. The second one might be a bit more difficult. I want you to translate a sentence from French, from English to French. So here, she has been playing piano for 10 years. And the second one may be a bit more difficult. Whenever I get late, I feel bad. So the first one, she has been playing piano for 10 years. It's using a pattern that we've, we've seen before. Do you remember? Okay, so now I'm gonna show you the answers. She has been playing piano for 10 years. Elle joue du piano depuis 10 ans. Elle joue du piano depuis 10 ans. So here you've got the verb that is playing, playing, joue, present. Joue is first group verb, so you just take this subject, you see it's E, so you add E at the end. And then the last one, whenever I get laid, I feel bad. The translation is, à chaque fois que je suis en retard, so here there is a space, Je me sens mal. So here there are two verbs. Get late and feel bad. So get late is être en retard. Être en retard. So like it's um, like to be late. The, the literal translation of to be late. Je suis en retard. 
je suis here. And then I feel bad. In French, the translation for to feel good or to feel bad, it's um, se sentir mal. Se sentir mal. So here you take the transformation. The subject is I, I, and then sentir. Sentir is irregular, so you need to know how to form it. And this is this. This form is sentir. So this one was a bit more difficult. So be sure to check all the irregular verbs. That's really important for you if you want to master all the common verbs in French, because the most common verbs are irregular. That's a pity, but you really need to learn that. So let's sum it up. So here we've seen the usage. So five different usages. When, there is, when this is the current actions, um, when, the, when you started the action, but it's still underway, and also when you've got um, like true facts and habits, and then actions that are about to happen. It's still not, it ha still hasn't happened yet, but it's really s close to be, to be done. Like it's, it's about to happen. And then you need to remember all those different endings. So for the two groups, for the two main verbs, avoir and être, and then learn the irregular verbs. That's really important. Well, if you remember all that, present tense is really easy for you now. So I really hope you like it. Hey guys, this is Pierre from France. And today's lesson will target the subject of the composite past, the passé composé in French. This is the main tense when you want to talk about the past in French. So be sure to master that. First, we will talk about the form, the structure, how you can create this tense. And then after some examples, I will show you how to use it. So first, the form, the structure. You need the subject, like always with verbs in French, and then an auxiliary and a verb. You need two verbs in a certain way. You need two verbs in a way to create the passé composé. The reason why there is the word composé or composites is because you need two verbs. You need the verb that you want to use and an auxiliary. The auxiliary is être or avoir. Être or avoir. One of those two. You need to conjugate the first auxiliary, the first verb, so the auxiliary, at the present tense, so really simple, and then the verb, each verb in French has a unique past participle. So you only need to remember one, and then you're done with the conjugation of the verb. But first, you need to know the auxiliary and how to conjugate that in present tense. So here is a quick summary. Être, the different forms are je suis, tu es, il or elle est, nous sommes, vous êtes, and then il or elle sont. So this is for the first one, être, and then for avoir, to have. J'ai, tu as, il a or elle a, nous avons, vous avez, il or elle ont. So you need to remember those two auxiliaries. And once, if you know only those two auxiliaries, you know how to form, like you, you've done half of the way. You know half of what you need to know to create the composite past. Then what remains is the past participle. The past participle is, as I said, a unique form. And it's sometimes really easy to know what is this form. So if you take the classic division of the verbs in French, you've got the first group, verbs ending with ER, second group, verbs ending with IR, and then irregular verbs, the third group. So here, if you've got a verb from the first group, so ending with ER, the past participle is Really simple, you just need to get rid of the E and the R and you add E with the accent. So for example, for the verb manger, to eat, manger, same pronunciation, exactly the same pronunciation, except you get rid of the R and you add the accent. Then for the second group, so verbs, most of the verbs ending with IR, some of them are irregular. So for most of the verbs ending with IR, you just use I. 
So you get rid of the R, and you got the I. So for example, for this verb, to finish, finir, fini. It's so re really simple. You get rid of the R. And then for irregular verbs, you need to learn by heart again. But it's only this time you only need to master one word, like the past participle, and then you're done. So this is not that hard, and it's usually always similar endings, like you or I or is. So here you can see some examples. When you lose something, to lose, perdre, perdu. So here it's you. Vouloir, to want something, to want. Voulu. Mourir, to die. Mort. Another example, prendre, to take. Pris, with an S. So this, for the irregular verbs, you need to remember the forms. But it's only one form that you need to remember. So that's not that difficult. And then, you know everything about how to form the, the past participle. But there is one thing that I didn't mention, is how to choose the auxiliary. Because you cannot just pick one of them. You need to be careful. So there is one rule to decide how to choose the auxiliary. In almost all the cases, it's avoir. But if the verb is a change of state, for example, the verb is um, arrive somewhere, to arrive, then it's a change of state, you moved. So for that, you need to use être. So this is the rule. So if you've got a change of state here, change of state, It's always être, and otherwise, it's avoir. So it's a bit tricky to remember what is a verb that is, um, like, means a change of state. So for that, um, usually it's the habits that will help you to distinguish which verb you need to use. But in most cases, it's always avoir. So here are some examples to make sure that you understood everything. Um, so, for the verb manger, with the subject you've got here, I, j'ai mangé, j'ai mangé, I ate. Then for the verb arrive, arriver, as I said, you need to use the auxiliary être, because with arriver, you like changing the state. You, state is changing, so this is like that. Tu es arrivé, you arrived. Then here is perdre, to lose. Ils ont perdu. So really simple. Perdre, you use avoir. Then you've got vouloir. Nous avons voulu. Again, vouloir is like just a common verb. It's irregular, but it's, uh, there is no like change of state. So it's avoir. Nous avons voulu. Nous avons. And then here, vouloir, voulu. Nous avons voulu. Then, rester. Elle est restée. Here, this is a change of state. Rester means to stay. And when you say to stay, you can, you can feel that, oh, okay, you're not changing your state. But in French, it means that you're changing. The changement is you're not changing, but it's a change of state. So you need to use the verb être. So here, elle est restée. Elle est restée. And you can see here, I added an E. It's not just like that. I added this red E. And the reason is, when you use the verb être, the auxiliary être, you have one more rule. This rule is you need to check the subject. And depending if the subject is feminine plural or feminine plural, you need to add something. So here, you've got a feminine subject. So you need to add the E at the end. In French, E is often the mark of the feminization. So the feminization of a word is with the E. So here you need to feminize the word because the subject and the auxiliary, the auxiliary is être and the subject is feminine. Here is another example, partir. So you change the state, you leave. Partir, to leave. Je suis parti. So here again, you need to use être. Je suis parti. 
So no specific rules here at the end, because the subject is je, and when you don't know if je is masculine or feminine, you assume that it's masculine, so you don't do anything. And here, the last one is mourir. The subject here is les feuilles, the leaves. Les feuilles sont mortes. Les feuilles sont mortes. The leaves are dead. So here, mourir is a change of state. You're alive and then you're dead. So you change your state. And the, um, here, since les feuilles, the leaves, is a feminine word and also plural, you need to add es, as I said here. Feminine plural, es. Les feuilles sont mortes. So be careful with that, with the verb être. Être is used when you've got a change of state, and when you use it, you check the subject and you might need to add es or es at the end, depending on the gender of the word, feminine plural or feminine plural. So that's what you need to remember. And then, what about the usage of um, the passé composé? There are two main usages. So the first one is when you talk about a past event that is still affecting the present. So right now, like if I said, j'ai rangé ma chambre, right now, j'ai rangé ma chambre. It means I've tied up my room, but it means that it's still tied up. Like it, now it's clean. It's, it's not something that was done before and now it's not uh, true anymore. J'ai rangé ma chambre, I did it in the past, and it's still done. So this is uh, one of the ex first examples. And the second one is, j'ai perdu mes clés. So it's really similar. J'ai perdu mes clés, I lost my keys. It means that you lost them, but you still haven't found them again. So they are still lost. J'ai perdu mes clés. So this is the first usage. And the second one is, when you talk about a past event that is definitely over. So usually it's for historical events and also for actions that you did, but they are not affecting the present anymore. It's like done once and for all. So the example here is, j'ai mangé une pomme. J'ai mangé une pomme. I ate an apple. It means like uh, maybe a few hours ago, a few days ago, a few moments ago, you ate an apple and it's done. The apple is eaten and nothing more. J'ai mangé une pomme. Then another example is, mon frère est né il y a cinq ans. My brother was born ten years ago or five years ago here. Five years ago. So this is something that happened five years ago. And um, this is like a single event. He was born and then it's done. So here you need to use uh, the past participle because this event was done only once and now it's done, definitely done. It's not affecting the present, but it's like a unique event in the past. So here, ene, this is uh, the passé composé. So here the verb is to, to be born. So in French, it's the verb to be born is naître, naître. And then you need to use uh, the auxiliary être, which is um, the reason is because it's a change of state. So you need to do mon frère est né, so être, and then né, which is the past participle of naître. And the last one is, la révolution française s'est déroulée en 1789. So this one is talking about a historical event. So this is really punctual again. This has occurred only once in the past and now it's done. So when you say that, you're referring to this event that was done and now it's definitely over. La Révolution Française s'est déroulée en 1789. So the French Revolution occurred in 1789. So this is uh, the two different usages that you can do with the past participle. It's quite simple, but be sure to check and to be sure um, if that's the correct tense. There is one additional thing that I want to tell you. This thing is concerning how to translate the passé composé in English. The passé composé is um, like you can translate it with two different uh, things in English. You can use the preterite or the present perfect. And the situations can depend. 
So in most cases, when you've got um, the past event still affecting present, it would, you would use um, like the present perfect to translate that. And for past event definitely over, generally it's the preterite. But it's not like, um, like a truce for everything. Um, you need to be careful. But here, j'ai rangé ma chambre, I've tied up my room. So this is um, here, present perfect, the translation. J'ai perdu mes clés, I've lost my keys, again, present perfect. And here, j'ai mangé une pomme, I ate an apple. Here, preterite, preterite. Mon frère est né il y a cinq ans. My brother was born five years ago. Was. Here it's preterite again. So be sure to understand that preterite is not passé composé and present perfect is not passé composé. This is sometimes you need to translate um, passé composé with preterite and sometimes with um, like present perfect. So be sure to check that. And that's all for today. So be sure to remember how to form that and to be sure that you understood the tricky situation with the être verb. And then if you remember the usage, you are perfectly good with this tense. This is one of the most common one and this is a kind of easy one. So be sure to really understand everything. So yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Now let's take a look at some conversational phrases. Listen to the dialogue. Que faites-vous dans la vie? Je suis artiste. Listen to it again, now with the English translation. Que faites-vous dans la vie? What do you do? Je suis artiste. I'm an artist. First of all, you need to learn how to say, What do you do? That's... Que faites-vous dans la vie? Listen to it again. Que faites-vous dans la vie? Que faites-vous dans la vie? Now, how do you answer this question? This is the pattern you'll need. Je suis. Your occupation. I'm a. An. Your occupation. For example, I'm an artist. Je suis artiste. Je suis artiste. Here are a few more professions you can use with the same pattern. Police officer. Policier. Policier. Policière. Policière. Teacher. Enseignant. Enseignant. Enseignante. Enseignante. Doctor. Médecin. Médecin. Doctoress. Doctoress. Engineer. Ingénieur. Ingénieur. Now, listen to some examples. Que faites-vous dans la vie? Je suis enseignant. Que faites-vous dans la vie? Je suis médecin. Que faites-vous dans la vie? Je suis ingénieur. OK, now it's your turn. Do you remember how to say, what do you do? Que faites-vous dans la vie? Imagine you're a doctor. Do you remember how to say doctor? Médecin. Médecin. Say, I'm a doctor. Je suis médecin. Now answer the question saying that you are a doctor. Que faites-vous dans la vie?
Je suis médecin. Now, imagine you're a teacher. Do you remember how to say teacher? Enseignante. Enseignante. Say, I'm a teacher. Je suis enseignant. Now, answer the question saying that you are a teacher. Que faites-vous dans la vie? Je suis enseignant. Now, imagine you're an engineer. Do you remember how to say engineer? Ingénieur. Ingénieur. Say, I'm an engineer. Je suis ingénieur. Now, answer the question saying that you are an engineer. Que faites-vous dans la vie? Je suis ingénieur. Well done! In this lesson, you learn new occupation-related vocabulary and phrases you can use in your everyday life. You are now able to talk about your job like a native speaker. Great work! Here's a reward. Speed up your language learning with our PDF lessons. Get all of our best PDF cheat sheets and ebooks for free. Just click the link in the description.